back on the ride, Nine Feet Lounge, still joined by the best team in radio. You know the plays. My man Ringo's joining us today, Mike the moderator. And we have a superstar special guest. If you're a Knicks fan, or maybe you're not even a Knicks fan, if you're somebody who's trying to find information on the Knicks globally, not just New York, we got the preeminent brother that's doing it right now. That's 40,000 deep. I'm a fan. Moderator's a fan, and he's here today on his maiden voyage. Just as a fan, and he's here on his maiden he's voyage at Nine Feet to Lounge. Be fans. Well, that's you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Nine Feet Lounge, host of Knicks Fans TV, CP, the franchise. What's yes, going sir, on, yes, brother? Sir, appreciate you, fellas, man. Nah, no doubt, man. Me on. Holl- Thank you. One time, one time for your boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit that thumbs up. Hit that button thumbs up button, button for your boys. Subscribe, boy. subscribe. All, all, all that, that. no yeah, doubt, brother. We in twenty minutes, on. you may be saying something else, but anyway. <laughs> Get my car. I'm getting out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Again, brother, we can't thank you enough for for spending some time with us, man. Like I said, we're all fans of your show. Um, Watching Knicks Fan TV in August to find out, you know, what the schedule is like. There ain't nothing else on TV, I guess. Nah, man, it's not about (laughs) this. They can watch the fumble. (laughs) Nah, I know. They, they owe they owe me money. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. I'm low, only joking. Low, low, <laughs> low. But again, man, let, let's kind of dive into it, man. You have you have taken in this what I call the golden age of the independent. You've taken this this regular platform and grown into something where now you you rock with Max Kellerman. You know, you know, you, you're doing you know events with at the Garden. How did this all start, man? Talk, get us to the to the very beginning when you was like, I'm a fan of Knicks. And, yeah. You know, we've all experienced the Siberia, the cold chill of the, the losing years. But how did it get started? Yeah, so, I mean, it started for me just, just being a fan of New York sports in general. Mm-hmm. You know, right. being born and raised in the city, sports is a fabric of our culture. Right. And I remember, like, early, early days, I used to go to my pops to work. You used to be, like, take your kid to work days. So yeah. You used to go in the office. He's an engineer. And in the office, you used to hear, like, on the radio, mm-hmm. you used to hear these dudes, like, arguing all the back and forth, back and forth. I'm like, what is that? It was Mike and the Mad Dog. Yeah. And he used to listen to that every mm-hmm. day. Every day you used to go in there, and they just used to go mm-hmm. back and forth yeah. and arguing, screaming on top of each other. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That was 950 Lounge doing that. <laughs> that, yeah, that, was, that was Who that in the background? Lounge, That's Big Mouth Kevin. You know, <laughs> that was so ingrained in me that I became a fan of it. And, mm-hmm. and sports radio was like, I used to wake up to it, go to sleep to it, mm-hmm. ride in a car to it. I'm mm-hmm. listening to them, all, all the shows. Right. You know, Max Kellman back in the day, Stephen A., uh, Joe Beningo, all those guys. So Joe Beningo. Yeah. That yeah. was just always yeah. a part of me. And then when me and the homies used to argue back and forth about sports, it was just natural. Right. And so I wanted to recreate that in the digital realm. And also represent the culture in a way that, you know, when, when you see these, these media players now, yeah, Stephen A is up there at the top, but it is mm. very few of us really representing, especially right. in basketball. Yeah. You know. And so I thought that was important. And so twenty seventeen, I, I took my camera phone, I went out to the draft, went out to MSG, just started interviewing fans. This this is when uh this is when we drafted Frank. Right. Yeah. But at the same time the Porzingis trade rumors was going on. Yeah. So we got some good footage. I didn't know what I was doing. The last layer recording. of Phil Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole Phil fiasco. Classic. Yeah. And and I just, you know, from that day, I just threw it up on YouTube, mm-hmm. see what the reaction was. And over time, it kind of just evolved. You know, we went from doing recorded content to me saying, you know, I want to do the whole Mike and the Mad Dog thing, taking phone calls and capturing the, the passion of the mm-hmm. city. Because right. for me... All sports fans are like none other, right? You know, when it comes to sports, I just felt like I needed to capture that in the digital realm where you know you could have on-demand content, right? And just have the fans more involved right. in the game. Mm-hmm. So, when did you know that from just 2017 going to the draft? Kind of, really you probably doing it because you just wanted to hear you had a voice and you wanted to hear yourself speak, and yeah. there's platforms for that. To knowing that, you know what? I, 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 I I'm. I got a place in this thing. I, I've carved my own seat. Whereas 10, 15, 20 years prior to this, you you, you have to you know go to school or you have to have some type of in. You've created a lane. When did you know that that lane was like more than just me and my friends hearing me talk? But now like I got I got the masses. I got I got yeah. real real media coming at me. Um, I would say well, first, you know, little by little we would 
we would gain momentum for each interview. So right. the first interview we ever did was Chris Childs. Mm. And from Chris Childs, I sent that interview to the next person, next person, next person. Right. Ultimately, we got Alan Hahn on from MSG. So it, it just kept snowballing. Right. But really what took things off was the Oakley interview. Mm. When we got this is where he got thrown out the garden? This was... This was <laughs> Yeah, this was after that. Oh, oh this, yeah, yeah, oh, this okay, was after yeah. that. Oak had probably okay. a lot of things yeah, to say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely a lot of stuff to say. When we got the Oakley interview, man. We, we had thousands of people watching, yeah. tuning in, mm. just commenting, going off. Then the whole buzz took on to Twitter. Mm-hmm. But then when I really knew like we had something on fire was when the national media started picking it up. Right. So Michael K. Show took some sound bites from right. the New York Post. Um, and so it just kept going. And then, then the pandemic hit. And I was like, damn, what are we going to do? So, Chuck D spoke to Chuck. I'm like, yo, Chuck, you know, he, he's been a big champion uh, mm-hmm. of, the, of the platform. And I said, you know, what are we going to do? And right. he put me on to the X-Man. He right. said, yo, call X-Man. It's be, he's a fan favorite, former right. fan favorite. They would love him. And from the X Man interview, it, it turned into Rasheed Wallace, turned into Kenya Martin. And now, the thing with X Man, and, mm-hmm. and I did see that one, I didn't watch the whole piece, but. Maybe you can clear some light for me. And this was actually just came up on a conversation that I was having in Clubhouse. Now, the Xavier McDaniel story is obviously X played one year with the Knicks, right? And gave the the, the famous Scottie Pippen migraine headache was caused to X. The rumor is is that David Falk, Jordan's agent, said because he was X Man, mm-hmm. Xavier's agent, get him out of New York. And, and that's when X and the Knicks couldn't come up with a game plan. He went to Boston. Boston. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of rumors saying that's that's fake. That's not. Can you clear the air Listen, on that? I asked him personally. I said, right. did, did MJ have anything to do with it, with the whole David Falk connection? He was like, nah, nah, nah. I mean, I believe him. Right. You know, when we started the show, he came right to it. Like, this is why I left. This is what happened. Because we knew that that's what the fans wanted to know. Why right. did the X-Man leave? Yeah. You know? yeah. A lot of yeah. fans felt like if he would have kept them, you know, you put X Man in instead of Charles Smith in '93, it might be a different yeah, story. He was the right. enforcer. He was the enforcer. Yeah. I st- I remember having the poster when I was in high school. Xavier McDaniel was choking the crap out of West Matthews <laughs> when he was with Seattle. Yeah, I had yeah. that poster right on my wall. Like this dude, West Matthews looked like he looked lifeless in that picture. But it's crazy. Again, we got CP Knicks fans TV in the house. Go ahead, Mike. Jump in, bro. Listen, I I, I mean. Let me let me tepid it this way. I think the most significant thing about Knicks Fan TV. All right, first and foremost, let me make this clear. I am a consumer of Knicks Fan TV, and the man here will contest that I I do super chat. You you made the call I while call I was in, in. Vegas. I'm I like, call in. Casino, he's calling up. Yeah, I, I was a correspondent for Knicks Fan fact. TV, right? <laughs> but I think the most telling thing of it all is. The growth organically of a product. There's no advertisement for Knicks Fan TV. This is strictly word of mouth. This is grassroots. And as a black man, to see you go from, I guess, your your woman and your kid and your family to 40,000 individuals, 39,950 you've probably never met. What is that like? When you're sitting back, you're on your alone time, you're not on and you're just running this through your mind. What is it that like to you? Yeah, it's big, man, because, you know, we will get messages from people that'll say, you know, you, you took me through a dark time or your show. You know, I went through a lot of depression. I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And people look to your show to get them through their day. You know, and that's deep because I never when I first started, I'm just like, I just want to talk Knicks and mm-hmm. let people talk Knicks. But then when you realize that you really have an impact on their personal life, you know, it means a lot. It definitely means a lot, but I just felt like you, there was there was a lot missing in terms of sports media coverage, and it's a lot of platforms, a lot of content creators that's pushing the content out there, like listen to me, listen to me, but it's not too many that's pulling the fans in. And like I said, in this digital realm, you always had sports radio, you always had sports radio, and, and you know, there's people that call into the show, but they got to dodge the commercials they yeah. got to wait in line you yeah. know for a long time they you might have five minutes of Knicks coverage mm-hmm. with me you get an hour and a half yeah to from two. there we're we gonna we're gonna take a couple clips from that that's gonna go on instagram that's gonna go on facebook that's gonna go so so we feeding you wherever you're at 
and whatever in, in the type of content that that you can consume. Let me ask a question. Mm-hmm. So I suppose that me or Ed would call in your show. I don't want to talk mix <laughs> right now. I want to talk about championship <laughs> across the bridge. You gonna you gonna disconnect us? <laughs> if if you come with respect, and we, and we get them. We'll, we'll I'm, get a, them. I'm, I'm we get listen. Them. I'm respecting. The trophy. He's we just a bandwagon hopper. Any, anybody who's winning, he's on. If it ain't a Nick, for, if, all right, all right. If it ain't a Nick, yeah, you get disconnected. If, <laughs> shortly after. But if you come with respect, I'll, I'll, I'll let you. Rock. All right, we'll invite you to the parade. You just can wear your Nick. Uh, yeah. Just don't need the chat because the chat will roast you. The parade down Fulton Street. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. In, in the back of a pickup truck. <laughs> so, but, but now listen, we we get you know fans from other teams that'll call in, right. that'll tune in, mm-hmm. and we welcome everybody. Because you know, yeah. at the end of the day, it's it's about Nick, but it's, but it's a sports show. That's yeah. it. And that's no all doubt. it is. That's yeah. So that's who do you see as your competition? Because there's a couple of y'all out there. Because I follow about I think I wouldn't say four or five. Might not be on the same level of subscribers mm-hmm. as Knicks Fan TV, but you got one guy out in the West Coast. I'm not going to say who he is, but... West Coast. Oh. That CK. Oh, that's my guy. That's your guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, don't, I, I know that's not your competition. Yeah. But then there's a few others that are starting to pop up now. Do you mm-hmm. look at them, or do you just... You're so focused on Knicks Fan TV, you don't even think about the competition. Yeah, I, I just have tunnel vision, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I don't even, you know, mm-hmm. I don't really consume anybody else's, and that's no disrespect to them. It's just because I'm just so locked in on what mm-hmm. I'm trying to do and to move it forward. But at the same time, you know, I embrace collaboration. So with Knicks Film School, with uh, the Strickland, uh, you know, those guys, we kind of created a network just coming up together right. and doing events together and just collaborating on content together. So I don't really look at them as competition because I feel like if you're doing that, you, you're locking yourself off to their audience and, and their potential and vice right. versa. So, you know, Rising Tide lifts all boats, and that that's kind of how I see it. So I don't, I don't really look at everybody else's competition. I just... I mean, to be, to be fair, I think that the way you do Knicks Fan TV, the way... Macri does Nick's film school, the way, you know, they do the Strickland, or even the way Sim does nothing but Nick's, is so different. It's the same because of the content, but they all come at such a different angle that there really isn't much of a, a overlap or a or, or repetition of services. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like nothing but Nick's, you know, he'll Sim and them will get into X's and O's, not that you don't, mm-hmm. but they'll do a whole show strictly on mm-hmm. X, O's, uh, analytics. Like, they'll, mm-hmm. they'll break down that, how many times he pushed off with his left hand to, to get the jumper off. Different, where, yeah, different yeah, lanes. They all come from different lanes, so that's what kind of makes it, it worked to whereas Nick's fan TV is Nick's fan TV. Yeah. If you want a little, you know, you want sports, you want weather, you watch the news. You want to know barometric pressure, you put on the weather channel. Like, it's like that. So I, I think that's why you don't really have a true competitor yeah. in the it's, sense it's of It's not like that. But the funny thing is, is like the, the fans will try to create that, you know, yeah. especially with me and Sam. They'll be like, oh, y'all beefing, y'all do nothing together. And then. I'll send him a clip of that in, on Twitter, like, yo, read this. And right. we'll be laughing at it because me and him are cool. You know, mm-hmm. me and Sim are cool. We talk yeah. all the time. And, and we're going to talk about collaborating down the road. But fans see us not really working together as, oh, you know, there's yeah. competition, there's beef. There. It's, it's really not like that. I pity you. You can't leave. You can never leave. <laughs> leave what? The Knicks? The Knicks. You can, if the Knicks Why decide to move overnight somewhere well, to we're Nebraska. Not like, we're not like Why the Nets. Leave? They're not going to be the we Omaha like the Knicks. Nets. <laughs> well, we we like the, the, Nets. the Nebraska. We are here, the Nebraska Knicks. <laughs> but it never going to happen. Now, I got one quick question for you. So the two things I want to know, which was one of your greatest interviews that you did mm-hmm. and which interview that you want, a person that you would love to interview that you didn't get to interview yet? The bucket list is always going to be Patrick Ewing, man. I mean, as a Jamaican, American, my whole family's Jamaican. I mean, that was really the, the basis of me falling in love with the Knicks, man, because mm. I came up during those, that 90s era. And, nice. you know, with, with Jamaicans, whatever whatever field they're in, whether it's track and field now or basketball, yeah. whatever it is, the whole country's behind them. And so when you're coming up in that household, that's how we knew the Knicks is mm. through Patrick Ewing and, you know, him putting the team on his back, the, the sweats and the, the ice pack on the knees and just leaving it all out there on the court. So he's definitely, 
you know, on, on the bucket list. We had Spike on. Had, we, we definitely oh, had Spike uh, on salute, last, salute. last month. So, yep. so that Talk was about another. the chair incident? No, no, no. We, <laughs> nah, 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 I kept Damn it clean with All positive, bro. Yeah, I kept it clean with him. I kept clean. Did you have John Stockton yet? Stocks? Stocks. 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 No, not yet. We, we didn't have stocks yet. We, we didn't have stocks yet. Uh, I would say favorite interview to date. The Harper interview was great, man. That was yeah, he was another one, one of my favorite wow. names. That was a good one. Yeah, and, and I waited a year. Mm. We were trying to connect back and forth. And, um, you know, he gave me an hour of his time and just, he, re he really nice. left it all on the line. You know, talked about the Houston series and coming to the Knicks and what that was like. So I would put the Harper interview up there. The X Man interview, man, that was, it was incredible. I mean, fans are still watching it to this day. Mm -hmm. The X Man interview, I think, all together from the main interview and, and the subcontent recreated, it was like over 250,000 views on, on YouTube. Nice. It was so many people into that one. So I would put Harper and, and X Man right up there. It's nice. 28 years. Okay. But Charles Smith, Mr. Lay, you know, to this day, is people still talking about yeah. that? Yeah. 28 years ago. My thing is that why don't you have Charles Smith on a live? You'd be, you'd be surprised how many customers, how many nah, people will come nah. on don't that live. That. You know what's so funny? You know what's so funny? The same event that we had Spike on, Charles Smith was there. And they and they knew and the organizers still, were trying to, man, man, hightailed it out the back door. Listen, I, 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 before we go ago. to a break, Charles Smith is big in technology. He works on Wall Street. For the pandemic, people were at the restaurant on Wall Street in suits. Still, still like him? Yeah. You should have made that layup. Yeah, he, 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 How he, 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 he don't miss that? Can't lift that down. I can't speak for him, but he, he oh, don't want that. Didn't that layup Still joined by CP, the fan franchise, Knicks fans TV. I go. It's my go-to. I mean, and I, I say that with, with respect, not just because you're sitting here. When I want to find Nick information that I want to verify, I'm going to your Twitter, your Instagram. Or I'm pulling up a video or something like that I, that I did I missed or sort of the other night and just let me just make sure if if CP is saying it then it's legit. Now obviously you you've gone you you've gone this thing forty thousand organic viewers and then Max Kellerman comes to call and talk about that whole situation getting involved with Max and with SNY. Yeah, it's funny because um, you know that. The fan base looks at the mainstream media. We call it LOL Knicks, right? Mm -hmm. We call it Knicks for clicks in that, you know, the mainstream media, they, they try to expose the Knicks and, and, and harp on the negativity. Yeah. But that has given rise to our platform and, and the independent platforms alike. And so for a while, I, I was on a rampage going at Michael Rappaport, you know, when, when he showed up at Barclays <laughs> in the Nets jersey. Me and him were going back and forth uh -huh, on Twitter. Uh -huh. And still going back and forth. And, and um, How could you do that to us? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So, he was know? a Nick, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah he's just right. like you. He run with the... Because his, his man is Durant. Listen, I was, his, his man is Durant. Oak. He was trying to protest the whole Oakley yeah, thing. So yeah. I had to call him out on that. And, you know, the fans had backed me up. And... um with the Kellerman show, you know, they invited me on uh, to talk Knicks, and it went from me and him going at it. Yeah. You know, it, that was classic, I, by the oh, way. That first episode, yeah. I, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, we went at it, and then they just kept bringing me back. Yeah. Kept bringing me back to talk Knicks, but then we started covering uh, the NBA at, at large. And it never really was on my list to say, you know, I want to do this on ESPN one mm -hmm. day. I want to, you know, have this opportunity, but it really just fell in my lap. And, and since then, you know, I've been uh, I've been appreciative of it, and and then with S and Y, I started doing um, the putback with Ian Begley. Right. So S and Y has brought me on board. Right. And we start covering um, NBA Knicks content for their YouTube channel. So right. it's just been a great journey, man. It's just been a great experience. For so me. has it has now this this passion for the Knicks and love for human and Jamaican roots become your your nine to five, or is it still like just you yeah. know my well, my nice compensated hobby, but I still have a, a business. I would say it's, tra it's transitioning. Right. I would say more than a hobby for sure. You yeah. know, we have two employees on the team right now, video okay. editor and Super Dave, my producer. Oh, we, we, so. we, we got to we gotta talk Dave offline about uh, compliance, but that's for another yeah, day. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, <laughs> we'll definitely talk on that. So, yeah, we're growing, man. And, yeah. and, you know, the contributions from guys like Mr. William and all the advertising and everything, we mm. just – Reinvest it back into the brand, man, and and, and yes, the James Joe Jones already went. Mike and you ain't bring no Nick gifts. 
I ain't bring no Nick gifts. Yeah, you ain't bring You're no not a Knicks fan. Not a Knicks fan. He's trying to get up. He's a Knicks fan. He's a Knicks fan. He just likes free swag. But he's trying to get us to become fans. From the, I think the thing that 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 really endears Knicks fan TV to me. Number one, I've been on Knicks fan TV since about. 2200 viewers i think you had mm -hmm. i know you were under 3000 when i first caught on to it mm -hmm. so that was number one and number two anything you put your money to you want to see a visual return right you want an roi now whether it's a physical roi or if it's a visual intellectual roi and if you've ever, you know, five dollars, two dollars, I'm the ten. I mean, clearly, I'm not Michael Parker with the super chats, right? So Michael Parker, <laughs> yeah, is, Michael, Parker is, Michael Parker's a whole nother dude. Got a budget for 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 super chats, yeah, he's but got a lot of government to sit money. and say, you know what? Yeah, I can look through my receipts and say, well, maybe for a given month, I gave CP forty dollars. But then you turn around and you see CP at this place, CP at that place. I mean, my background is media, so I can tell, I can look at something and tell when it went from 1080p to 4K, right? So I can tell when sounds are a little crisper. I can tell when calls are coming in a little better. I can tell when I can hear Dave on the phone a little better. So it's everything you put into that, you're physically seeing an immediate return. And that's even before we get to the quality of the content, right? right? Mm -hmm. I don't care how good food is. If the presentation is poor, then you ain't eating the steak you, off you, of garbage. You, you ain't messing. <laughs> right. You ain't messing with it, right? <laughs> right so, right. but that's the one thing I can say about Knicks fan TV is that from that perspective, man, you are spot Appreciate on point. It. And again, to see it from 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 a black man, it even it's even more enjoyable to sit here and say, mm -hmm. I'm watching a product that not just rivals the majors mm. but the majors are calling this man to come talk to him he he was listen yeah. we was in vegas he was completely upset when you made the trip he was like cp ain't yeah, coming man. i had to break the news to him i said oh, yo he man. ain't coming oh my god and, 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 so santa man, claus was and there. that's coming from a cleveland cavalier <laughs> fan <laughs> Same colors, same colors. The same intensity, the same intensity. <laughs> now, question I got for you right now also. Mm -hmm. Now, would you ever um, have a have a conversation with Reggie Miller? Of course. That would, he that, has of course. Nick, Nick Moore. That's the one I would like to see because how, yeah. how he used to be always known as the Nick Killer. He, he's else. not he known. He was the Nick Killer. That's the one I want to yeah. see. That's the one I want to see. You have that yeah. with him. No, nah, it's on the list. It's definitely yeah. on the list. So yeah. what do you think about the team this year? I think, you know... Based on who was available in the off season, I think they they took a prudent approach. Um, the front office has shown so far that they're willing to be aggressive but not stupid. Unlike you know, previous administrations, right. unlike right. previous administrations, yeah. yes, they have a bevy of of draft picks and young players, but they're not just going to toss it all out the window just to make a black backsplay page splash and say <laughs> we got Dame. You know. It just doesn't make Got sense. It. it doesn't make sense. So even in the draft, they try to get up to 13, 14, 15. They wanted Chris Duarte, who went to the Pacers. They wanted Trey Murphy, who went to the Pelicans. They couldn't get up there. So they moved back. Got some more draft capital and, and got a guy in Quentin Grimes who they, they believe in. Right. Summer league is summer league, but he, sh he showed out. Listen, I, I love Clinton Grimes. Um, obviously, we saw him live, but I remember the kid when he came out, McDonald's All-American, with the Kansas. Mm. And didn't work out of Kansas, then went to go play at Houston, took them to a Final Four. It's a very good talent. He's a hard-nosed kid. He's got talent, but he's got a, he's got a dog in him that, yeah. you know, it's like, you know what? I'm I'm constantly have to prove myself. The same thing with the kid from with, McBride. With, McBride. With McBride. McBride is gonna be yeah. the McBride one. McBride played at Press Virginia, so we know what he got with Huggins. Mm -hmm. So he we so the Knicks are drafting and bringing in people that are Nick players, similar right. to how Miami does. You know, or San Antonio. It's a certain yeah. character of athlete they want, and that's what I like about this team. Yeah. And while yeah, they're not superstars. You know, you don't necessarily need that one superstar. And if it's not there, don't jump out the window to go get somebody. Listen, we saw Spill. Tibbs. We were sitting right behind Tibbs. We saw Tibbs, and some of the plays, you could see Tibbs was like, I don't even believe why they drafted this mother. <laughs> it's it's very like animated this with his looks. Yeah, we, we get that. <laughs> I, I know he was frustrated, yep. man. But, but like you said, man, with Grimes, McBride, mm -hmm. it feels like they they now building a culture. Right. right. And they're bringing in good locker room kids, kids that are working hard, defense is their priority. Right. But with McBride and Grimes, they can shoot the ball. Yeah. And not just shoot it off the catch and shoot, but shoot it off the dribble which is something that we've been missing on this team. We yeah. have a couple of guys, you know, Rose has showed that. Alec Burks has cert certainly showed that. But in the playoffs, we got exposed because 
we didn't have enough shot creators. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, RJ has to work on that side of his game, but in this offseason, they really prioritize that and bring it in Fournier. Yes. Drafting Grimes, McBride, bringing Burks back, Rose back. Right. Now you bring in Kemba. So now you have guys that can take the pressure off of Julius, especially right. Rose, Fournier, Kemba. Mm-hmm. Kemba is the I think, I think Kemba right. was the themselves. most important. So what happens to Ken, uh, McKenna is gone, right? Yeah, Millie, Millie gone. Frank, Frank is gone. Frank and is the gone. Other, what's the other? What's Alfred the other Payton is his son. Alfred Knox, Payton went to the Suns. Knox, he's gone. No. Not yet. Three, think, this is Knox's last year. The Kentucky connection will keep Knox, you know, Safe. nurtured in-house, but – I, I'm not. I don't see a future. He for him right now. What's used to keeping him on the team? He ain't gonna get no run. Yeah. I mean, I mean you never know what could happen. You might need a body. He's got a yeah. shot. The you kids fill got out a the shot. roster some way. Yeah. But you need a new yeah. enforcer. Go in there and file. Would you prefer? <laughs> would you prefer Mellow Ball? <laughs> uh, he he in L.A. now. Wait, I mean, Lee Angelo, Lee Let me Angelo. Ask you, what do you think about now, Camelo now being in L.A.? You think yeah. that's going to work because LeBron is a I, t- I, is a very high maintenance guy. I think it was two years too late. They should have brought him in when they went to the bubble and won the championship. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know what happened there. Melo was out there available. You know, that's your right-hand man. How are you bringing Jared Dudley before you bring yeah, in Melo? Yeah, no, that made no so sense. That was a little suspect to me because I'm a, I'm a big Melo fan, and I was hoping he would have won a championship with them. But Lakers right now, it's all or nothing for them right now. Yeah. You know, in, in the investments that I they made. I think they in search of something now. Well, again, when you, it, yeah. when you they got a 37-year-old to. superstar, there's no future. It's right. about win now. Right now. I mean, right so... Now. You know, they got the over the hill game, but again, if they monitor the minutes, do they? Do you now listen, you got the nut Westbrook. You got A D who can't yeah. play a whole season. Right. But that's all you really have. And I mean, yeah, you got LeBron. If LeBron can stay healthy, yeah, he's good. But look yeah. at the West right now. The um, West Denver, is crazy. Denver's dealing with an injury with with, with Murray. Murray. He's not coming back. Okay. Why is done? Ben Simmons the is now. Kawhi is uh, done for the season? Um, Kawhi, wait, listen, oh, he took oh, a bruise. I don't think Kawhi comes back. Took a thigh bruise in San Antonio and sat the whole year out. Early. Nah, he right. got hurt, hurt. He said, um, ACL. He's ACL. He's ACL, yeah. 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 That's so hurt. There ain't no thigh bruise. Now. No, he had a thigh bruise in San Antonio and had the right. whole year, so he ain't coming back. So you, well, you still have there. Utah. Okay. The Suns is returning back. The I'm Warriors, not so on the Suns next year. I think the Warriors, because uh, what's next come out? Yeah. And if right. the Warriors Thompson. come out, you better be really but scared Clay of them. Thompson's back. But it's also a lot of what ifs. It's a lot of ifs. Yeah, There's a lot yeah. of ifs with, my, with LA, too. With LA, too. Injuries. You don't know how Westbrook, LeBron, and AD are going to work out. Westbrook right. is a nut. Come over to the Nets. <laughs> no, it's what? a lot of baskets no. here for everybody. No. The Nets got enough headaches no. over there. No, no, we don't want them over there. We you, got the world is flat, man. You really are a net fan? <laughs> I no, like the not Nets, not man. No, you don't. Well, we went to the, well, hold on. You a Nick fan? We always went to the net, that Nets was, and we, got Carl Blanc. Because that's because we of were that. in the VIP, <laughs> man. The Barkies was paying me at the time. Up, man, nope. they begging you to come in, man. <laughs> Facts. They were you giving tickets off half price. Were they giving tickets half price for the playoffs? Yeah, when James Harden was hawking them. Yeah, hawking tickets. Buy one, get one ticket. Show up twenty minutes before game time and sit behind the scorers table. I will say about the Barkies again when I was in radio. And we would still doing, is well. We would no. When I was on the marketing side, we do we covered net games. So this is when they had Brooke Lopez, and it was like half empty. They used to get prime ribs. I so I mean, like it was like you I know. Still, I heard they still do. Well, yeah. I don't know because I ain't involved with it. But I wasn't a fan. That was just my job. They were right. paying me, so right, I got to go right. with the money. I got to go with the money. I'm gonna take another quick break. We'll come back. I want to get your your top five all time people you've seen Nick mm-hmm. team. Mm. I'm sure we all have in rodeo. You probably pick. I have, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I Nat, have too. Well, Nat Clifton or something like that <laughs> with you. But we're gonna take a quick break. CP the franchise is Nafi Lounge. Come on, I kind of want to chop it up with you on your top five. Now I don't have to ask. Probably should say top four. We know Pat's in there, but um, that's his top five. I, I would you shut up? I'm talking to CP, right. not not you, CP. Yeah, talking to this thanks. CP. Yeah, I know, <laughs> <laughs> I know his, his initials. <laughs> but um, your top five that guys you witnessed mm. from you not you know. Old school guys, but guys, you actually saw a play. Mm-hmm. What's your top five? Give me uh, your your right, guards, your center, and your, and your forwards. Oh, top five Nick plays. Top five top Nick, five plays. Nick yeah, plays. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Um, at the point, top five. Wow, mm, that's hard. It could yeah. be Wall Fraser. Yeah. At, 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 at the if, five, if we he saw Pat. Wall. At the five, we're gonna go Pat. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's Automatic. easy. That's why Automatic. I said four. That's why we're I said four. Right. 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 Um. I'll put Melo at the four. Okay. Gotta put Melo at the four. Okay. I'm gonna put Mason at the three. Ooh. Okay. No Oakley? Nah, Oakley nah, was a four. Put Mace. Nah. <laughs> Mace. Put Mace. Yeah, that's actually nah. Mace. Yeah, intimidating. And the crowd here yeah. goes crazy. Yeah. No no offense to Oak. No offense to Oak. That interview still, you know. 
<laughs> we, went, we went 12 rounds with Oak. We went 12 rounds. You know? Hopefully you come back. Stop and, and the fight, Ron. Yeah, yeah. Need so a free I'll car wash? Five. <laughs> I'll put Pat at the five. Uh-huh. I'll put Melo at the four. I'll put Meese at the, at the three. At the two. Ooh, this is where it gets rough. Yeah, it's rough, man. This is rough. Yeah, I'm putting H2O, man. Allen I'm, Houston. I'm putting Allen Houston at the two. Wow. Mm. I'm putting Allen Houston at the two. It's no no offense to Starks. That was my guy. That's all about the Ah, that's Starks rough. Starks was the first jersey I had. Mm-hmm. Game seven, I forgive him. Game six, he took us there. Almost won it. But I got to go Allen Houston, man. Point guard? <sighs> I'll go Harper. Okay. Okay. Really? Harper. Harper at the point. Wow. I'm going to give you mine. Just to say, I wasn't yeah. old enough to, to really see Mark Jackson, and he wasn't here for that long. Right. I would love Steph. It's but that YouTube. Was a, that was a dark time. Yeah. yeah. That was a dark time. <laughs> Come on, YouTube. YouTube, Mark Jackson. Jackson. The dark day for the empire. Yeah, dark day. That was a dark day. <laughs> I'm, I'm probably a few years older, so I'll start with Pat. I think, obviously, Pat, great Nick. My forwards, I got to go with my all-time favorite Nick, but no, I can't. Because... Mm. Did you see Bernard play? Uh, yes, Hell I did. Yeah. Uh, I Bernard saw Bernard. Wait, was it color? Wait, was it color or black and white? <laughs> it was color. You, no, well, in, in <laughs> my in <laughs> my house it was black and white. Um, <laughs> with the high shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Bernard was special, boy. Yeah. Game face and all. Um, I guess my other forward, I I probably go with Oakley, just because those black and blue. I I love Mace, rest in peace. Um, but Oakley to me, guards, um. Point guard, I'm probably going with Mark Jackson. It's tough because I love I love Rod. But Rod, when I take about Knicks, Rod's more Bronx for me, mm-hmm. Truman High School, right, right. than it is for the Knicks. So I'm going with Mark. You know, that's that broom thing still mess still messes him up. We took that broom in Philly. Yep. And my shooting guard, this is tough. And I probably will go with Allen Houston because I still can't even I, I met John Stocks once and I told him about the two for seventeen in Houston and he looked at me like I, don't, I won't even. I can't even use the words. this guy in here? I can't even use the words because we're FCC on some markets. But he yeah. looked at me like this, you know. Anyway, and, and mm-hmm. I met LJ. I would say LJ too at the four. Six. I mean the forwards. But That's his six. Nick. I'm talking about Nick history. Right, right. You know, he wasn't there long. But there again, long. he had great moments. So he I would was, go with. Um, I would go with also Allen Houston, mm-hmm. Tennessee stand up, and point guard Mark. So and my favorite all time Nick is Bernard uh, King hands down. Mm. Period. Okay, right. go you me? go. Well, Patrick Ewing, mm-hmm. Hall of Famer. Uh, my point guard, Michael Ray Richardson. I don't think Michael Ray gets the, ship the love be shanking. that <laughs> all the other Nick get for some reason. Mm-hmm. Shooting guard, I would say Allen Houston, but go Rory I, I love for some reason Ray Williams. Man, mm-hmm. when Ray and Michael was in the, they were the best backcourt. Even even Magic Johnson said. That was the best backcourt. Ray Williams was Ray special. Williams and Michael Ray Richardson. Stand up. No so doubt. Those, that's my backcourt. Patrick is, is is in the middle. Um, one of um, small forwards, Bernard King. But the power forward, I don't know. I for some reason, and this is this is just this is this is going back. But power forward. It would be Larry Domic. No, Lonnie. Uh, Lonnie Shelton. Lonnie Shelton. Mm. He was. Oh, like, you he really was going the back. original enforcer. You know. Yeah. And like I said, I think some of the older Knicks from the seventies, the only one they really give love is Clive. Cause Clive's right. yeah. always did yeah. Earl, but I think mm-hmm. that they they got to start going back, giving some of the older yeah, players. Rest some soul. Love. Dean Meminger was a monster. Dean mm-hmm. Dream, baby. Dean Dream was yeah, a monster. No um, let me see. For me, obviously it starts with Pat at the five. Oh uh, man, my four. I'm gonna go small ball. My four is gonna be Mace because my three is gonna be Mellow. Um, two. I mean, I want to go Allen Houston because when he would raise up to fire, that was just that stroke sure. was just smooth. That ninety nine run, I think. Yeah, for that me stroke. Was bad. That stroke, like he'd bang it on you if you if you slept on him. But mm-hmm. yo, it was he had a Rucker Park jump shot. But you know you what? just call layup when he mm-hmm. rolls There's up. There's one thing about Allen Houston: the first three quarters, like the first half, he was on fire. Looked like in the fourth quarter, he would be invisible. Like he looked like he couldn't even make a shot in the my, fourth quarter. My, I, I I like the Ray Williams, Michael Ray Richardson mm-hmm. backcourt. However. We don't never get Bernard King if the Knicks don't trade Michael Ray Richardson to Golden State. That's so right. I put those two together. So if I had to do a six and seventh man, 
they'd be my sixth and seventh man. I want to go Steph, but man, those were the those were so, the yeah, dark, dark eras. Times, dark times. <laughs> those dark were the the those lights were the, wasn't even those on. Were the the he was affected with devils like the Wu Tang yeah, song. Yeah, That's yeah, a dark yeah, day for the yeah, Empire. Yeah, yeah. That was a, it, it was a, it was a, it was a bad time for bad the Empire. Time. Yes. Empire. So for point. <sighs> Because he got the job done and Melo's not here, if his play didn't highlight what we were doing for mm-hmm. about a half a season, I'm going to go, what's, what's your boy name? Who, who girlfriend called the cops on him because he had not Ray Felton. Ray Felton. Ray Felton. Felton. Damn. Ray Felton. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go okay. Ray Felton. Wow. I'm going to go Ray Felton. Ray Felton. Damn, I might have to give you, take all your credit. Ray Felton. He's finished with Felton. The guy that goes through the airport with shotgun? Felton? Uh, well, I'm going to go Man. big. Rod Strickland is my point guard because Rod Strickland – did things with a basketball that I don't think any Knicks point guard really did. Maybe okay, Steph, maybe right. Steph did some things, but Rod Strickland's handles and his grit determination was legit. I'm gonna put Melo at the two. No disrespect to Allen Houston. I'm gonna oh, put. Gonna make your own. I'm gonna put Mace at EA the three. Lineup. I'm putting Oakley at the four, and I'm putting Ewing at the five. Cause I wish you would come into that paint. I will tell you right now, you will get destroyed quick, fast, in a heartbeat. Old '88, '90s basketball style. Nobody's coming into that paint with those three down in it. Ewing's probably the softest one out of the three. Out of the three. But with Mason, with Oakley, you're definitely getting a forearm to the head and a right hook to the gut. Easy. I don't care if LeBron comes down with that 6'8", 260 frame. He's going down just as bad. We got to get Ed. Nope. Ed said John Stockton. He was already a little. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I'm not, a, I'm not a Nick fan, so nope. Oh. Drazen Petrovich. <laughs> Larry Hughes. <Yo, he's> <laughs> Jason Kidd. <laughs> but Eddie Jason Kidd was, he was a good Nick for one season. He was a net. He was a net first. He was a net. Yeah, was was a net. net. Before, well, we, before we step out of here, CP, let me put this question to you. If this and this is a standard question of mine, if the CP of today, whatever day this is, we're conducting this here interview, could speak to the CP of 2016, what would you tell him? Mm. Wow, 2016. No, the dark days of the Knicks too. <laughs> it, just in terms of in a lot terms of blackouts. Of just what are we doing? Like just in terms of the content. In, in terms, content. Of, in terms of you talking to you, like, yeah. I don't necessarily have anything to do with the Knicks in particular, but just. Yeah. There was no Knicks fan TV in 2016, mm-hmm. and look mm-hmm. at you now. You, you're almost a global phenomenon, to be fair. There's a Hawks fan TV. So yeah. that alone should tell you what Knicks fan TV is. Yeah. So if you could talk to you from then, mm-hmm. knowing what you know about everything now, what would you say to you? I would just say just keep it consistent. You know, just keep it consistent and keep learning. Um, and that's that's what I tell to, to a lot of aspiring content creators that, you know, ask for advice, ask for help. You have to keep it consistent because there's going to be days where you know, you're going to have nobody watching. You might have five people watching. You might have ten people watching. But with consistency, you'll learn. And with learning and iteration, you, you become mm-hmm. better. And, and you have to invest. In the beginning, you have to invest time. And once you start accumulating resources, then you, you reinvest those resources and keep it consistent. So that, that's what I would say. Consistency is the key. Mm. CP, you said all. Oh, we appreciate you, bro. Next uh, time, bring Ashley Moss. But um, <laughs> <laughs> real quick, where can people reach out to yeah, you? Yeah, uh, NicksFanTV.com, YouTube.com slash NicksFanTV, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, NicksFanTV. Very, very easy. Brother, we can't thank you enough for coming. Thanks Love to lot. have you back. Hope we can get you back on. For sure. For we sure. appreciate the time. CP, the franchise. Thanks Catch a lot, the fellas. show.